Yellow, yeah, this is Delusion Elbow here. I hope you guys are doing swell today. For today's video, we have a video having to do with what I'll be doing for the foreseeable future on Tekken 8 when it comes to my new main character. Now, I have four characters that I have tested out. I have tested Steve, I have tested Brian, I have tested King, and I have tested Lars. These are the characters that I put the most time into practicing and figuring out which one I found most fun, which one I found more to my style of play, and if I enjoy the character so much that even if I lose in a game, that I don't mind losing, that I still enjoy the, the character, that I still have my fun, that I don't have to be as tilted when I do when I play with a character specifically, right? Because that's one factor that I found most important, regardless if the character itself is strong or weak or whatever, right? So let's commence. So with Steve, I'm going to be mentioning the pros and cons of how I felt with the character in terms of his strengths and weaknesses, how much fun that I had with the character when I was playing him, and overall, if this is the main character for me. So, the pros of with Steve is that he has great poking, he has great counter hitting tools, his stances with the ducking and then backswing, and the ability to also use Lionheart to use that as kind of like a back tempo in a sense, is really good. I found it to be quite fun whenever I applied that and used that against the opponent, using Lionheart and getting behind the, the attack, and then simply counter hitting the opponent was the most fun that I had with Steve. Now, when it comes to his overall play style, it's quite tricky to get into, so I found it to be kind of hard. I was having a tough time getting in with his ducking because I, I was having a hard time canceling off of stuff like his flicker stance or his peekaboo stance to try to figure out how to maneuver around against the opponent so that way I don't make bad mistakes staying in those stances since a lot of the times Flicker doesn't have a doesn't have the ability to block but Piggy Boo does but it's a lot more stationary so I'm not able to cancel as quickly in comparison to Flicker but because of how his playstyle is very revolved around trying to counter hit the opponent and poking the enemy to death I found it to be quite easy to just simply just do the one two ones or applying down for ones or whatever to try to get into against the opponent. His lows I thought would be bad, but they're actually quite good for how he plays. He doesn't have like really good kick lows or anything like that the other characters may have in the game, but at least have some decent poking when it comes to his lows, like his down one or his QCF2 uh, as well. These are really good at applying some form of pressure against the opponent when you're up close. The one thing that I will say that is the con with Steve is that he doesn't have really good reach, but he has a lot of good movement abilities that can go into the opponent. So that's the one thing that I found to be quite the weakness when it comes to playing Steve. And then he lacks a actual 15 frame launcher that he can use against the opponent. So really you have to rely a lot on either Sonic Fang or using your 4 on 1 plus 2 to get your damage if the opponent is minus 15. Now for his mix-up game, I felt that was quite strong for what it does. Like he, again, his poking is by far one of the strongest in the game. So I didn't really felt like I was doing very little when it came to mix-up game. Though I, I will say that my gameplay over here doesn't really showcase a lot of the uh, fortitude when it comes to playing Steve and really applying the mix-up game with lows, mids, and highs when it comes to him. Even though he is more high efficient with a lot of his moving high moves, he's still relatively good when, that, when he applies his mix-up game with lows and highs and some of the mids that he has in his gameplay. So in conclusion, I felt that his gameplay was actually not as difficult as people may make it seem to be. His gameplay is relatively easy to get into. The the only thing, like I just mentioned, the difficulty part of him is learning how to cancel his moves into ducking or cancel his moves in from flicker stance to try to be safe on block. That's the only thing that I gotta work on besides that. Getting better and better bit by bit with Steve and figuring out how, how to maneuver better, how to mix up better, how to find moments to counter hit with his back one and, and, and his other moves. I literally think that he would be a character that would be a monster character for me to, to learn since he does have a learning curve, but I found him to be quite fun when the aspect of trying to land those counter hits and learn, landing those moves that can give you that dopamine hit of landing those counter hit launchers against the opponent. That's one thing I really enjoyed when it came to playing Steve. Now for Brian's sake, I, I would say that this character is phenomenal. Like I, I didn't really think that I was going to have so much fun playing him. He has really strong, really strong moves. Like I'm talking about like big monster hitting, counter hitting moves. 
in his kit. With 3 plus 4, back 1, forward 3, he has an orbital that's safe, which a lot of orbitals are safe in the game I would, I, if I can recall, but it's still, it's relatively good for what it does. And his wall game is relatively easy to get into as well. I, I would have thought that it would have been harder. At the beginning, I, it was difficult to actually apply his wall game because I didn't really know how to properly wall game his combos. But then as I got better and better and better and better with him, I found it to be quite easy to apply a wall carry game with Brian. And then when it comes to his wall damage, it's insanely high for what you can do with them. Once he has snake eyes, he hell, even without snake eyes, he does tremendous amounts of damage with the tech 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 uh, move that he uses. The up forward two or the up back two, two 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 thing that he does with three. Landing big, big hits. And when it comes to his mix up game or his setup game at the wall, I can tell you right now that it's scary because I can tell that the opponent struggles to really figure out what the Brian's going to be doing. Because once you have the snake eyes and you perform three plus four against him once they get up, into the two or the charge up two to get that wall crush like Bakuram and Tekken 7, that feeling of getting that is so good. The only thing that I do find kind of like shit about the setup is that once, once you do land the charge up two and you get the wall crush, the damage that you're getting from it is not really high. I would have thought it would have been higher for Brian, but it's not as high as what I thought. Now, the difficulty when playing him was that even though all these big moves that he has are really fun to use, his neutral game sucks. It really sucks. I, I had a really hard time trying to figure out how to play Brian. Uh, I was trying to play decent poking with his 1-2s or 1-2-1s or 1-2-4s, which can be ducked, and 1-2-3s. But when it came to trying to like get in, I found it to be very difficult to do that. Like I have your backsway into 1 or using your backsway into 3, which is your hatchet kick, to try to see if you can open up the opponent. But no matter what I did, if I was too quick on my intentions, how I was going to apply my, my attacks and pressure, the opponent can easily just sidestep to the right, which I already knew was a big problem with Brian because I also know how to play against Brian. But I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Like, it was relatively easy for the opponent to just simply sidestep right or even just sidewalk right easily on a lot of the moves that I was using. So I felt like I was just struggling to get in and trying to uh, land my counter hits, which is another thing that I also learned that with Brian, I was trying to fish for the big hits with 3 plus 4, back 1, and forward 3, and so on. These moves feel good when they land, like really good when they land, when you get the counter hit. But when you whiff, it is the worst feeling when you whiff with those moves. Because once you whiff, you're dead. But once you land like some of the moves, like let's say hatchet kick against the opponent, and it really applies that pressure against them when you're up close to them, that really feels good. His low game is quite shit besides hatchet kick. Like he has down uh, four and he has down back three that are decent, good, decently good for what they can do, but they're not ex exactly the best low that he has in his game. And again, besides hatchet kick. But besides that, conclusively, I think that the character is quite fun. Landing the setups off the wall, his big damage is outrageously strong, and I do like hitting hatchet kick against the opponent once, say. I even like did like four or five hatchet kicks against somebody back to back without them like just differentiating the timing when using it and catching them off guard was so funny. Now, with King, the way I feel about him is that he is remarkably easy to get into. His gameplay isn't very difficult when it comes to his neutral or when it comes to his mix-up, really. In fact, I found it to be quite fun utilizing his command throws and, and using his stances like muscle armor or even using Jaguar Step or Jaguar Sprint. It's relatively, you know, easy to really play him. I didn't feel any real difficulties with him besides the one thing that I think that he really lacks is amazing zoning tools against the opponent. That's the one thing that I feel that he lacks. But seeing how many remarkable tools that he has in his kit, I don't think he even needs it. But the point is, is that with the overall tools that he has now in his gameplay, it is quite easy to just apply pressure against the opponent because you have command grabs that are hard to really break because not many people know how to break grabs. And this makes it really easy to play him. Now, I will say that at the beginning of my testing with King, I was having a hard time figuring out how to properly like balance out his tools and how to figure out how to really apply his mix-up game but sooner than later I started to figure out how to properly do this as more and more matches and more uh, games that I played it felt quite easy to really apply his game plan against the opponent even those that already knew how to fight against King I still found it relatively easy to get in 
because of moves like his 4-4 neutral 2, his command throw giant swing or shining wizard that are really good means of getting towards the opponent and stopping them from trying to like go for power corrections or whatever. And not only that, he has a lot of amazing means of applying his strings like with the forward 2-1 or using forward 2 into down 1 to trick them up. And I also love when whenever you manage to get like a knockdown against the opponent and they attempt to side Okeme and they don't attack immediately but you just want to like see whether or not they're going to go for a side Okeme and then you manage to catch them with one of those grounded grabs when they're knocked down. It is so fun pulling that off with King that I, even when I lose with him, I still had fun. And maybe it's because since I don't know how to really play him all that well that I didn't feel very tensed up when playing him. But then again, when I was playing Brian, I was already quite tensed because his gameplay was just so awkward and it's so difficult to really apply his big moves against the opponent because a lot of players just, you know, immediately sidestep to the right. He, hell, even sidestep into the left, I had trouble with Brian. But with King, it didn't feel that way. I actually was able to do what I can with King. And this immediately tells me that he's not a character that's, that struggles a lot against characters that love to simply just sidestep him, if that makes sense. So overall, I do think King is definitely a good runner up to being one of my main characters. With Lars, I found him to be the most beginner friendly character out of the four characters that I've mentioned in this video. He has a lot of unique stances, I've already known that since past games, but the more that I played him around with the dynamic entry, silent entry, and the other entry that I don't remember how to call, I think they tend to call it Len, something like that, but it's relatively, he's like he has everything, I feel. He has really good lows, at least in terms of the down back 4 is decently good for what it does even though it is negative on block. He has decent neutral moves that he can use against the opponent but they're not exactly as amazing comparatively to other characters that are considerably stronger than him. But I do like the his flow of transitioning between dynamic entry and silent entry and so forth allowing access to a lot of pressure game against the opponent especially if you're somebody who is more newer to the game. He's definitely a very, very fitting character for those that are trying to get into the game uh, as a new player. Though I'm not new, but because of the feeling that he, he brings about with his uh, style of play, it's very easy to play him. His counter hitting options as well as his normal launchers are all really great for what they can pull off. He has a 14 frame launcher that he can use in the game, though it is negative on block. And he has an orbital, and he has a hop kick. He has literally everything that you need as a character. His combo game is also really fun to pull off. They're not really all that difficult, and he's probably one of the best characters. I wouldn't say really the best, but I would say he's one of those characters that just genuinely has a really good wall carry and decent enough uh, wall ender for combos and such. So he's definitely up there when it comes to character uh, expression, if you will. So I do enjoy his overall combat. The only thing that I do not enjoy about Lars's gameplay is that he doesn't really have really good zoning tools. I think that that's the, re the right thing. Again, same issue that I, I saw with King. Doesn't have any really good zoning tools, but he has at least really good neutral moves to get into into stances. And that's another thing as well is that when it comes to his transitionals on certain strings, it you either can force yourself to go into the stance by simply just doing the string, or you can simply stop yourself. And that is the one tricky part when it comes to playing Lars is figuring out when you should be using your stances because there are some invulnerabilities or not invulnerabilities but vulnerabilities into his stances when it comes to using these strings or going into the stances forcefully as it does put him in a situation where he will get killed for attempting to just constantly transition between stances back and forth. But besides that, genuinely I think that he was quite a fun character to play. He's not exactly again very difficult to play around with. He's by far the easiest out of the four. So He's definitely another character that I find myself enjoying when it comes to his gameplay. I didn't really feel all that intense or livid whenever I lose a game with him. Though I will say at the beginning I was because I was like, what the f what the hell I should what could have I done to win with Lars? That's how I kind of felt with him at the beginning. But then at the end, I was like, man, this is relatively easy. And I know for sure that I wasn't really using utilizing all of the unique traits that he has and all the unique mix-ups and gimmicks that he can pull off in the game. Which if I were to use so, I think that I would have done a lot better and would have had a much different perspective of Lars. So in the end, yeah, he's definitely very fun to play with. 
So then who will be my main character out of the four characters that I have showcased in this video? Now, the one that I think that fits me the most out of all of them, Steve, resonates with me more than the other three characters that I played with. Funny enough, I had more time with Brian than the other three, but I felt that with Steve, I wasn't as tilted when it came to losing games comparatively to Brian. And to be honest, I really wanted Brian to be the main character that I wanted to stick with because his playstyle is a lot like what I would like in a character that's simple, it has big moves that counter hits, launches the opponent, so you get that dopamine hit when you're trying to like land these big moves. His wall game is really phenomenal, I like his big damage, his setups as well is pretty gnarly as well while you're at the wall, but his neutral game is really bad in my opinion, it just it struggles to actually pinpoint the moments that you want to hit the opponent with and a lot of his moves is, is so easily beaten by simply just sidestepping to the right. King on the other hand, I didn't really feel like he was a challenge to play with uh, because of the fact that he has so many great neutral moves and all the great moves that he can use to get into the opponent's defense, like with 4-4 new, uh, four, four, neutral 2. But in the case of his command grabs, it's just a, already a big leeway in helping him destroy the opponent's guard and patience when you're applying these kinds of moves against the opponent. With Lars, he was the overall the, the easiest to play with. His combos are flashy, his mix-ups are flashy, but I didn't really feel the challenging aspect when it came to learning the character, which is not really the biggest reason why I don't really want to main Lars. I think the reason why I don't like Lars as much as I thought I did was the fact that even though his gameplay is easy, I don't find him to be as an attractive character to main. I don't mean that in terms of like in aesthetics. I mean that in terms of the gameplay. I thought I would feel more attracted to that kind of gameplay, but I wasn't. Not as much though, comparatively to other characters that I played with in the past. And because of that, I didn't really feel that he was a character that I wanted to main. But when it comes to the aspects of, let's say, that is he a character that I feel that I can have fun with and what I get as tilted with, I felt that he was one of those characters that I didn't really feel as tilted or feel as aggravated when I lose game and when it comes to the factors of like fun aspects I feel that he is quite fun to get into but I feel that his gameplay would immediately start feeling more and more competitive like I, I have to uh, find ways to optimize his gameplay and that's one thing that I kind of find myself like disliking when it when it comes to playing a character like I don't want to constantly optimize how to really like get the most out of the character and with Steve I don't really feel that way I don't feel like I have to constantly optimize how to play him because he has something similar to what Yoshimitsu has where he can kind of play differently from other different Steve players. So you don't have to particularly stick with one particular style of play with Steve because of how many moves and how many ways he can play around with his uh, stances. So that's the reason why I feel that Steve is the character for me. Now, even with that being said, I still relatively feel that even though Steve is going to be my main character, I still want to continue playing the other three that I've been playing with, that I've been trying out. So I'm thinking of making Steve my primary main character and then maybe rotating between Brian, King, and Lars in between, like maybe during certain sessions, maybe during certain day in the week, I'll decide to play either Lars or King and Brian and so forth like that, right? So that way I can, you know, get some different experiences and different sessions that I don't only solely just play Steve. Because I, I'm going to tell you this, guys, I don't want to be that channel where I just simply play that one character. I don't want to be that guy. I just want to be a guy that just makes content that is either entertaining or informative or funny or whatever the case is and just play a character that I like. I don't want to be a, the definitive, oh, I'm a Yoshi main channel. Oh, I'm a Brian main channel. Oh, I'm a Steve main channel. Whatever the case is, I don't want to be that guy. I just want to be somebody who makes good videos, entertaining videos, informative videos, and just do that. Now, besides that, since we're nearly getting closer and closer to a Heihachi trailer, I am looking forward to, to see exactly how Heihachi will be played. So I don't know specifically how he's going to be changed in Tekken 8. So when they announce the trailer and once he comes out, I want to see whether or not he will be the new main instead of Steve. Because yes, I'm stating now that Steve will be my main, my primary main. But if Heihachi feels more to my style than Steve, and I don't feel as tilted when playing him, then I might decide that Heihachi will be my main character. At least until, you know, again, I already mentioned this before many times in posts or in other videos that Armor King is the one character that I really want to main. There is no other character before him or after him that I think that I'll ever decide to choose over him. I, I really want to play Armor King. 
So when he comes out in the near future, he will be my new main if I'm still playing Tekken 8, that is. Because we don't even know exactly when they'll be releasing Armor King in whatever next season that they decided to bring him about. So with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's more of a me thing, not really a community thing. But if you like the video, give it a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe to see more of my shit. And yeah, stay tuned. I do have more information that I want to let out. Maybe in another video, I'll let you guys know. And so yeah, stay tuned. Stay safe.